Where I am used to be a neighborhood that was full of homes, but in 1998, the city of St. Louis bought out this entire neighborhood, and this was due to proposed expansion to the St. Louis Lambert International Airport. I'll explain more. Well, actually, I don't know. I don't know if I want to explain more. Yeah, I might just sit this one out and hang out on the sidelines and let this clip roll and leave you hanging. All right, yeah, just kidding. No, I absolutely want to explain more, so let's start. Well, this neighborhood, as you can see, is gone. Not a single house is left. An entire community was destroyed due to airport expansion. A rather large community at that. Carrollton is the name of the neighborhood that used to stand here as the place was developed in the mid-1950s. Most of the homes that stood here were built from 1954 to 1958. At its peak, there were as many as 1,800 homes, along with just under 6,000 residents. The neighborhood was developed by Fisher & Fritchell, which is a home-building company that is still active in the greater St. Louis area today. The houses in Carrollton were said to have had more of a modern style than what was seen in most other subdivisions. The neighborhood was thought to have had a better street design as well, as the streets were wide and had curves that complemented the slight rolling hills throughout the subdivision, which made the neighborhood more attractive. As during the 1950s, most of the newer housing in St. Louis County was said to have been built small and cheap, and they were along narrow and square patterned streets. However, Carrollton was not, and it was a highly sought-after neighborhood during the mid-1950s for a lot of those reasons. Or so they say. You know, I don't know if all these good things were as grand as all of the reports so claim, or if it's just added drama to make for a better story, because we all know that all these media companies do that, but I could see it either way. They also say that Carrollton started a trend as other developments modeled their designs off of what they saw here. Additionally, the neighborhood was walkable as you could walk to nearby grocery stores and other shopping amenities off of Natural Bridge Road. Now to provide some more context, St. Louis County went through a massive house building boom throughout the 1940s and 50s as the automobile became a standard part of life. You didn't need to live in the expensive, heavily taxed and crowded city of St. Louis anymore. The suburbs offered newer and cheaper housing, more land, a house with a yard, possibly a garage instead of living quarters or apartments, or any sort of multifamily building that was built in 1835. The idea of living out in the suburbs was too hard for many people to resist if they had the means to, so away from the city they ran and out into the suburbs they settled. The part of the neighborhood that we just saw was only a small portion of it. However, it was the first part of the neighborhood to get built, and the street that we're on right now was the grand entrance to Carrollton, if you will. This is the intersection with Natural Bridge Road, and to the right is a shopping center that was built specifically for the new Carrollton subdivision. The area today looks rather run down, likely because there are 6,000 people that no longer live in the neighborhood that it was intended to serve. There's a bowling alley that's still in use that we just passed on the right, and the large building back there used to be a grocery store as I understand it. Currently, it's a couple of restaurants and a banquet center. There's another strip mall on the left that also looks run down, at least it was when I drove through on November 13th, 2021, which is a year and a half before me uploading this video. Anyway, as you can see, there's quite a few storefronts that are empty. Just past all of the shopping centers is the Carrollton Village Apartments, which has managed to survive the Carrollton apocalypse. Alright, well back to the earlier talking points of suburban expansion in St. Louis County. St. Louis used to be one of the largest cities in the United States. The city found itself in the top 10 most populated cities in the country for 110 straight years, starting in the 1850 census and falling outside of the top 10 by 1970. That's the entire lifetime of at least a few generations that saw St. Louis as being one of the main cultural centers and being one of the largest cities in the country. In 1870, St. Louis peaked in the rankings as being the fourth largest city in the country. St. Louis was larger than Chicago, which is hard to imagine. Only New York City, Philadelphia, and Brooklyn, before it merged with New York City, were larger cities than St. Louis was during the 1870 census count. 
It's crazy to think about, and it's crazy how things change, because if someone were to tell you today that St. Louis was one of the country's largest cities, anyone with knowledge on the subject would take you just as seriously as they take a TikTok dancer. Anyway, suburban developments really drained the population and tax base of the city of St. Louis. After 1950, just like most other large cities of similar scale at the time, St. Louis saw a sharp decline in population. The word sharp is putting it lightly. Detroit is often thought of as being the poster child for urban decay and population decline, but society should be looking more into St. Louis because the gateway to the West has seen a higher percentage of its peak population leave than any other large U.S. city, as it has lost 65% of its 1950 peak of 856,000 people. With that said, a large amount of the people that ended up leaving the city of St. Louis ended up moving to the suburbs of St. Louis, which is where we are currently. Today, Greater St. Louis is home to 2.8 million people, which is a more accurate representation of the size of the St. Louis market as a whole. Along with that, the region hasn't really seen an overall decline in population, ever. Rather, just continuous, slow and steady growth. So yes, we just passed north over I-270 and we're now in the northern half of the Carrollton neighborhood, which is a part of the suburban city of Bridgeton. In the center of Carrollton was a community park that had open fields for kids to run around in and a swimming pool. When looking at a map of the neighborhood, one might assume that the construction of I-270 ripped this neighborhood apart, but actually the freeway and the subdivision were built around the same time. Anyway, along with the park in the center, there were three other parks that were located on the outer fringes of the neighborhood. It was said that no resident within Carrollton was over a half mile away from a park. Today, however, the entire neighborhood looks like a park, maybe even a national wildlife refuge. In all seriousness, a part of the neighborhood has been transformed into a disc golf course, actually, so that's all good and dandy. Meanwhile, other parts of the neighborhood have turned into popular illegal dumping grounds, which is commonly seen throughout abandoned parts of cities, and we'll see some of it later. It's kind of pretty out here with the fall colors, actually. Maybe I'll retitle the video as the best area to see fall colors in St. Louis and put it on my Scenic Drive playlist. Nope. Other places that I went in the area along with this trip include Eureka, Pacific, and Wildwood, and out there the fall colors were much better. Spectacular, actually, and the reason why the fall colors are better out that way is because, oh, I don't know, uh, Carrollton is an abandoned neighborhood next to an airport with a freeway slicing down the middle, maybe? Also out by Eureka, Pacific, and Wildwood, there are some nice rolling hills along the Missouri River, and it's just a really pretty area out there, so stay tuned to see videos on those places. Anyway, let's start talking about how Carrollton saw its death. In 1987, the nearby Lambert St. Louis International Airport was the eighth largest in the country. Today, about 35 years later, the St. Louis Lambert International Airport is ranked as the 30th largest in the country. Airports like Charlotte, Baltimore, and Raleigh-Durham are actually larger airports and see more traffic these days. Now, if you would have predicted that to St. Louis area leaders back in the 1980s, they would have laughed at you and blew tobacco smoke in your face. A website called FlyStLouis.com claims that as many as 30 million passengers traveled through Lambert in 2000. Looking at things now, it's safe to say that things didn't go quite as planned by the predictions of the 1980s airport and regional leaders when they deemed that an expansion of the airport was necessary, as only 16 million or so passengers fly through St. Louis annually today. Really quick, as to the left here, you can see what remains of the community park that was in the center of the community, which had a swimming pool and it had several tennis courts and a large field and a playground, and this is what it looks like today. Well, airport leaders at the time said that it was crucial to add a new runway to keep up with travel demands. So, the airport started to buy up land along Gist Road and Lindbergh Boulevard, in which both roads had to be rerouted due to the airport expansion. Another community to the east, called Kinlock, was also purchased by the city of St. Louis due to the same reasons. Kinlock was a city that saw high poverty levels and was considered to be Missouri's first African-American city. There were as many as 6,500 people who lived there, but today there's only 260 left. 
and stay tuned to the channel to see a video on that. Anyway, the city of Bridgeport fought the city of St. Louis with lawsuits due to the noise abatement program, and it goes without saying that those attempts were unsuccessful. Now, this whole scenario was problematic for the city of Bridgeton, as Bridgeton isn't a huge city by any means. The Carrollton neighborhood was home to a good chunk of the suburban city's residents, so clearing out this neighborhood meant that a lot of tax dollars were being lost by the city. Earlier in the video, you saw that some of the nearby commercial retail areas have suffered as well from the drastic loss of nearby population. However, during the late 90s and early 2000s, Carrollton was the site of heavy arson activity due to the large amount of abandoned homes. Many of the homes, unsurprisingly so, saw high levels of asbestos. So while prior generations who once called this neighborhood home are likely to be heartbroken to see what has become of Carrollton, on the other hand, maybe it was a good thing that this neighborhood was cleared out. Not only because of the asbestos that's found in many older homes, but there are also two nearby Superfund sites, those being the West Lake and Coldwater Creek Superfund sites. West Lake is a closed landfill that's not far northwest from where we are right now. From 1939 to 1985, the land that West Lake sits on today was a limestone quarry. Starting in the 1950s, though, portions of the site began to be used as a landfill. In 1973, West Lake became radioactively contaminated as uranium ore residue was dumped on the site. There's actually an underground fire thanks to the nuclear underground waste, and it's been burning ever since 2010. With that said, many of Carrollton's ex-residents, along with other nearby Bridgeton residents and workers at the nearby industrial complex that frequent the area, have complained about several different health issues and a horrible sulfur-based odor on certain days. These health issues range from minor nosebleeds to burning eyes when driving by in the car to experiencing long-term lung damage. Now, the Coldwater Creek Superfund site is a separate issue. Coldwater Creek runs northeast from Bridgeton through the suburbs of Hazelwood, Florissant, and a few others. In 1989, it was discovered that radioactive material was found to be present in and along the creek. This is all thanks to Mallinckrodt Chemical Works, as in 1942, the company worked for the U.S. government to produce weapons-grade uranium at its factory near Lambert International Airport. Some of the waste from this factory was actually dumped at the Westlake Landfill. It was also later discovered that the radioactive waste was not just limited to Coldwater Creek and the sediment that lines the banks of the creek, but it was widespread and affected many of the nearby residents in the surrounding suburban communities, in which those residents saw long-term underlying health issues as a result. And many of Carrollton's ex-residents have noted that they have some of these health issues. Side note, as unfortunately the St. Louis area has had a long history with nuclear waste. Back in the 1940s, Mallinckrodt helped the U.S. build the first atomic bomb at a plant north of downtown St. Louis. Waste from the downtown factory was stored at a site really close to here from 1947 to 1960 at a place labeled as the St. Louis Airport site. Well, it turns out that waste wasn't stored properly on the site, and uranium ore would get washed into Coldwater Creek, which flowed downstream and affected the nearby suburban communities. As time went on, the residents in the neighborhood surrounding Coldwater Creek saw higher-than-average rates of cancer and autoimmune disorders. Additionally, overflow waste would be dumped off at the Westlake landfill, and from there it would seep into the soil, hence the fire burning underneath the ground at the Westlake Landfill, which once again started in 2010. As of 2018, an article from MissouriEnvironment.org claims that the fire could be smoldering until sometime in 2024 or longer. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was moving to the St. Louis area and I knew all of this, I would stay the hell away and I would probably look further west into St. Charles County to look for a place to live. Now, I'm not sure if I was supposed to be back here or not, but the gates were open, and I didn't see any signs saying no trespassing, so here I am. And you can see that back here, there's a lot of illegal dumping on the streets that used to make up the Carrollton neighborhood. Now, anyway, there's a handful of blog posts written by former Carrollton residents 
where they speak their views on the issue. Some people feel as if the airport expansion was corporate greed, as the Lambert Airport was surrounded by heavy suburban development already, and there's an airport on the Illinois side of the region that could have been expanded instead. But the theory is that they wanted to make the airport in Missouri the main airport for St. Louis, because it's in Missouri and not Illinois. All of the blog posts have one thing in common, however, and that is that Carrollton was once a nice neighborhood to grow up in and call home. And it's sad to see how the neighborhood has come to an end over the years. Even if the airport didn't expand, however, with the nearby Superfund sites, which is unrelated to the airport expansion, I'm not sure if you would want to still live in the Carrollton neighborhood. Just saying. Maybe the whole airport expansion thing was a blessing in disguise.
It's sad, but, you know, sometimes it's better if people don't inhabit certain areas. I mean, think about it. Would you want to live next to an airport where the airspace directly above your house is being used by planes flying in and out of a commercial airport? You know, it would be a common sight and sound to have a plane fly as low as 100 feet above your property. That can be really loud. Not to mention the more serious health issues from the nearby Superfund sites. That's something that I know I wouldn't want to mess with and... Maybe some of you wouldn't care, but personally, I couldn't do it. Anyway, from here, we're going to skip the video ahead to where I drive through the more populated area of Bridgeton. Here you can see Bridgeton and its city limits on the map. Bridgeton is actually one of the older communities in St. Louis County, as the town was platted in 1794, at a spot along Natural Bridge Road, where the airport property is today. And of course, none of the original 15 blocks are still around, as it's now an airport runway. Over time, Bridgeton ended up annexing the smaller communities of Fifi, hence the name of Fifi Road, and Pattonville, hence the Pattonville School District that serves parts of Bridgeton and the neighboring suburb of Maryland Heights. Up here on the right, the southeast corner of the intersection of Fifi Road and St. Charles Rock Road, to be exact, is actually the Fifi Baptist Church. This church was organized in 1807 and is thought to be the oldest Baptist church west of the Mississippi River. The building that is used for services today was built in 1870, whereas the older building that is still standing was built near the cemetery at Fifi Road and Old St. Charles Rock Road. That one was constructed in 1829, and we'll see it shortly. When it comes to the economic stats for Bridgeton, the city is home to just over 11,000 people. That number has been shrinking, though, for quite some time, as a big chunk of the population loss is due to Carrollton being purchased out by the city of St. Louis. Anyway, the median household income is $64,000 per year, and 31% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher. The median value of owner-occupied housing units is $195,000, while the poverty rate is 9%. When compared to St. Louis County, those numbers are all slightly below average, with the exception of the poverty rate. When it comes to the crime, whoa! 5,000 for every 100,000 residents when it comes to property crime, eh? And over 500 for every 100,000 when it comes to violent crime? It's hard to really judge that, though, because those numbers could easily be inflated by activity at the airport. So when it comes to the crime that actually happens in the residential areas of Bridgeport, that number is likely much lower than that. Come on, people. Does this look like a place where there's high crime activity? Nah. The public schools are ranked as a B-plus by Niche.com, but Area Vibes only gives Bridgeton a livability score of 65 out of 100, citing crime, schools, employment, and housing as the main reasons for such a low score. I mean, I don't think those numbers look too bad personally, but what would keep me away from Bridgeton is the nearby Superfund sites. You know, that kind of stuff is going to keep me away from any city. Well, we've seen a lot of Bridgeton in this video. We've seen the old Carrollton neighborhood, and we learned why that neighborhood has been abandoned, and now we're seeing the rest of Bridgeton, and we heard about the history. We've seen the economic stats for the area. Now we're just going to continue driving around and see some other parts of Bridgeton and just get a good idea of what the area looks like.
And if you recall my conversation from earlier, the Fifi Baptist Church originally had their services held here at this building near this cemetery. Once again, the Fifi Baptist Church is thought to be the oldest Baptist church west of the Mississippi River as it was established in 1807.
Well, for most of this video, we saw an abandoned neighborhood northwest of the Lambert St. Louis International Airport, that being Carrollton within the city of Bridgeton. And then we drove around and saw some other populated areas of Bridgeton because there's more to the city than just the abandoned neighborhood northwest of the airport. But with that said, I do end the video here. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell and select yes so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you saw here can be found in my Missouri playlist or in my St. Louis suburbs playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace!